is van life over in America? Well, according to a few videos I've been seeing lately in my feed, it is. So van life is over in America, but I have a different opinion. It's actually growing. But here's the deal for me, in my opinion, is that it's gonna be changing pretty soon. It will change. Here's how I think it's gonna change. Gas prices, I hate to be a Debbie Downer, but I do think that gas prices are gonna go up in like a year because we're not really producing anymore um, fuel. We're not producing and we're not um, drilling and you know making our own way here so we're having to buy it from other nations and it's going to be more expensive so here's how it's going to change i think the bigger rigs are going to be gone i think they're going to sell them or they're going to park them and get something smaller to travel in but here's something i mean a, a rv is a tiny home it is a tiny home why not find a place and just park it and then get yourself a minivan or a ProMaster and travel around in that when you want to travel. So there's an idea. But I do think the big rigs are going to go. I really do. And they're so expensive right now. A lot of people don't have the money. Um, I mean, I'm just in a, I'm a lowly minivan dweller. <laughs> I'm a lowly minivan YouTube creator. Yeah, I don't have the big rig. I don't have the big, um, the cherried out um with real expensive uh, products in here. I don't even travel with a RV or um, with a refrigerator, a 12 volt refrigerator. I don't even travel with that or an ice box. Yeah, I don't have an ice chest either. So, but I did go to Walmart this morning and I bought myself some eggs. I do have some broccoli and I do have um, my veggies. I haven't really been eating them and here's why today. I had my apple and my uh, avocado and then I had three eggs. And that's pretty much it for the day. I think my stomach is kind of shrinking down a little bit. But I didn't steam my broccoli because it rained so hard, oh my gosh, um, this morning. And it was chilly and it was cold and I wanted to get out of that mess. So I came to another area and I'm, I'm not comfortable just opening my window with my fan out so I can blow out the steam, the condensation. So I'll get to it later. I'm going to my daughter's later and I can uh, do it there. Why not? Why not? And eat my broccoli and my garlic there. So is van life over in America? You know, maybe for some people it is. Maybe for some it is. Maybe they're just, I think that some people are just kind of tired of it. They're tired of traveling. They're tired of worrying about it. Me, no, I'm not tired of it at all. At all. I did have a few people recently say, I thought you were going to get a place. Well, it, that didn't pan out. And I don't really think I need to. Um... I moved some of my bins up here and in the front of my minivan and I even said to a couple of my friends, you know, I said, I can keep going. Now that those are gone, I feel like I've, I've added on another little room or a little teeny room. And so I am just as happy as can be in my minivan. I love it. I think van life is easier than living in a house. And when I was pet setting, I kind of realized that. It's just a more of a simple life. It's just easy. <laughs> I can't, it's, it's almost hard to explain, but I don't have so much in here. So I'm not bothered by so much. Um, when I had my bins over there, yeah, I was a little bit crowded, but I think there are some people that maybe are getting tired of it. But the question was, is van life over in America? So that kind of implies that there's something going on maybe with the government. Um, making new regulations. I don't, you know, I've been asked that myself. Do you think, one of you asked me, do you think that there will be more regulations and um, they'll crack down on uh, people living in their vehicles? I can't imagine they would do that. I mean, I could see a big tent city. There's this big tent city and it's becoming um, unhealthy, you know, and then they have to bulldoze it down and clean it out. I can see that because sometimes it can be a little un, unsanitary, 
although it's their home, I feel bad, but it's, it can get unsanitary and there could be um, diseases and viruses just growing and tuberculosis, things like that. But I mean, if we're just in our vans, seriously, how are they gonna just come in and bull bulldoze that down? So there's different types of nomads. There's different types, let me get a little itch. There's different types of van dwellers. There's people that do strictly boondocking on BLM land. Now, if they shut down BLM land, they say, hey, we got too many people out there and we want to like reel them in. We want to know who's who. And it becomes stricter. Big Brother starts marching in, you know, marching in. Well, yeah, they might restrict on BLM land. They might do that. And that would affect all the people on BLM, right? And then there's the, the, the ones who just, they just want to, they're like tourists. They just want to travel and go see things. And then they stay like at Cracker Barrel or they stay like at um, a rest area. You know, there's another type of a nomad. So that's what they do. Be kind of hard to restrict that, wouldn't it? Unless gas goes sky high. I will tell you, I'm happy to report that in Tucson, I found a, a, um, a gas pump that was selling at $2.85. And I will say that is $2 less than when I left Flagstaff. When I left, it was like $4.89 when I filled up my tank getting ready to drive. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's $2.85. Yay. I was so happy. <laughs> I was telling everybody about it. My son's like, tell me where that's at. I need to go there. It was actually at a Walmart. I've never gotten gas at a Walmart pump before. So yeah. So I was ha I'm happy to report that. I remember last winter, it was really high in, in Tucson and nobody, we are like, why is it so high in Tucson? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I never did find out, but right now it's, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Things are changing, and the one thing that could change it, and I mentioned that, is gasoline. What if they start rationing gasoline? Well, that's gonna, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's gonna put a real halt on uh, traveling, isn't it? Being a nomad. But, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of the big rigs are gonna be sold. They're gonna get rid of them, or they're gonna park them in a RV park. Yeah, and you know, and then travel in something smaller if that's what they really got the bug to go travel, right? Well, and then you can be a nomad like me. I like the city life. I love, it's a city life for me, <laughs> living in my van because I park on the street. I'm a street parker. I'm not a street walker, I'm a street parker. <laughs> I have to um, uh, stipulate that, right? Let me get comfy cozy here this up just a little bit there we go i'm just pink today i'm a pink girl yeah um whoa he's pretty close he's pulling in over that way a little bit more sir <laughs> whoa there we go okay he's got red i got red okay well, yeah, the gas. So, and this is what I explain. I mean, in all reality, you never know. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but I'm just saying there could be a time where they start rationing gasoline. That's where, oh, I love it when I watch people um, because, you know, I've got my windows covered. So it's like a mirror. People are like checking out their hair. <laughs> I love it. That's great. But if they do that, what I like to do is my winter and my summer home, I'm only a tank away. Less than a tank. So here's what I suggest that y'all do is make sure that you keep your gas tanks filled. Because what if they started rationing on a day when you let your tank go down a little bit? Well, you're not a tank away from anything at that point, right? So yeah, go ahead and make sure that you have uh, your waters filled up at all times. 
and your gas tank is filled up. But when I get like a quarter, I usually go and, and get it topped off. Yeah. So that's, that is really good advice. A lot of you say, oh, you got such good advice. There's good advice. And even if you're in a house, go top, keep it topped off. Yeah. So is van life over in America? It's actually growing. It really is. I mean, and a lot of you that when you've been evicted from your home and you're living in your van or your SUV or even your sedan, you're mainly kind of staying in the cities a little bit. You're picking a city, maybe one you know, one you just moved out of, the one you've been in for years. And I've got a lot of ambient noise, a lot of cars right now. It's, it's Christmas holiday. It's on a Saturday. People are shopping. People are moving, moving, moving. Well, um, you're in the city, just like me, and we're, we're enjoying it. We really are. You know, if you have a good attitude, if you're going to be bitter, no, you're not going to enjoy it. No, mm -mm. you're not going to enjoy it at all because you're, you're, you're angry. You're holding a grudge. I did put out a post and it said, if you hold a grudge, that represents, that means that you have been expecting something different. But if you forgive, then you have a, a good heart, a regular heart that you can move on. Yeah. So don't hold a grudge. Just forgive whatever happened in your life that, that made this happen. And you're going to be a lot happier. I mean, forget whoever caused this. You're going to be happier. And isn't that really what we want to, want to know? Isn't that really what we want? You want to feel good inside. So for anybody who's holding a grudge and not forgiving other people who have done you wrong, things like that, or called you names or whatever, um, you got to forgive them because you're the one that's going to feel better. You have to just let it go so you can move on. There's where you can move on. By forgiving, you can move on. Well, so living in the city, I'm in the city. I don't know how they could stop me if I'm in the city because how do they know I'm in my van? And oh, please don't tell me. Oh, they know they can tell by the way. Not in Southern Arizona. Everybody has really heavy um, window tinting because it, the sun shines so much and they have their uh, window shades up. And a lot of people, if they're parking on the street by their house, they're gonna cover their windows anyway so somebody can't see inside to see what's in there right? I mean, theft, hello. Um, as money problems grow in America, theft is going to go higher. So yeah. And I feel safe in my car. They say, I've had people say, well, you're not safe in your car. Oh, I'm a lot safer in my car because I can hop in there and I can drive away. Even if they busted my window, I can hop in there pretty darn fast, rip off my shade there, start that car and rip off my shade and go quickly yeah and get my pepper spray and bam you know i could spray out um at them so i there's a lot of there's a lot more people doing the van dwelling and they're in the cities i guarantee they're in the cities i see them in tucson saw them a lot in flagstaff and if i talk to them they're just you know some of them are, are seasoned but a lot of them are brand new um, something made them get out of their house, whether they couldn't afford it or um, they got evicted. But here's a letter. I want to read you this. I just got this today. It's from Celestial Hope 111. There you go. She says, Lee had a scary experience. Thanksgiving with new neighbors. They don't speak any English. Had no problems with them till now. Started with their, started with their even newer guests. They had a newer guest there. Things escalated quickly. Had to gather my turkey and fixings and leave my home. Yeah. That sucks. I've been nothing but kind to them. This person was screaming at me in another language, flipping me off. You don't have to know the language to understand this volatile behavior was a threat. The police officer, 
wasn't helpful, said I had no reason to feel afraid. Third world behavior from people who don't know the language, let alone the rules, screaming at me and I've no reason to be afraid, told him he has no way to know how this made me feel and that I'd be following up. Any advice on how to handle this? I don't agree with breaking laws to be here, but wish no one any ill will. We're all just trying to survive, but they're in no way trying to be part of this town and continued acting up, even followed us when we left. Oh my gosh, that's stalking. That's that's threatening. And the police, I don't think the police are gonna help us anymore. I think they're just as nervous as we are. Yeah. And keep having more family come by playing loud music, etc. Since I don't know what to do, feeling unsafe. Sorry, so long. Well, Celestial, I'm with you, honey. And a lot of us are that are watching this right now. There might be some that disagree with my opinion and yours. But we're going to see a lot more of this, hon. We really are. Um, there are so many. How many new, how many people have migrated into America? Just in the past year, it's, it's almost like, what, three million? And that's just a number off my head that that was the last study I heard. Yeah, so they are from a different culture, all different cultures. And they don't know or have respect for what's going on here. Because like she said, they're trying to survive just like we are. They were let in, but a lot of them aren't getting much help. Well, and a lot of people don't want to give them help because it's like, we got problems here, right? So let's address this without any um, judgments, okay? Let's all just be safe. Let's talk about what we can do. If we're here, we know the rules, we know what's expected of us, and who, those who are here, already followed the rules and the laws and we're expected to do that but there's so many that aren't following the rules and laws and they're getting away with it so the police are actually putting more pressure on us to follow things correctly because we're the path of least resistance right well it is very frustrating which is one reason why i'm a van dweller so is van life over in America? Mm -mm. It's going to grow even more, even more, because people like you, Celestial, um, you are going to become fed up. How are you going to get along with your neighbors now after this Thanksgiving? How are you going to do that? It's not going to be pleasant. I know how these things go. And they can escalate and people can get hurt. So... I don't know what your particular answer is, but in my opinion, you might want to just keep to yourself. Now, if the music keeps going louder and you keep calling, it's going to keep escalating. Is there any way you can move? Is there any way you can start traveling, start thinking about it, maybe start planning it? You can get a minivan and live just like me and you can live quite comfortably. <laughs> Yes, you can. You can even follow. I don't care who wants to emulate and totally take over the way that I've got my van put together. I don't care. Do it. I mean, it is so cozy and comfortable. Yeah. So, you know, you don't have to put up with this. You really don't. You can do something about it. Um, but it's going to take resolve on your part. I don't hear, I just have a feeling and I, I, I don't mean to be unhopeful, but I don't think because of the way what you're describing happened and that was just two days ago. I don't know. I would really like you to follow up if you would. Okay. Follow up on this um, video and let me know in comments what's, what happened. But I feel for you. I totally feel for you. This is going to happen everywhere, everywhere. That's why I can kind of like, I can move to an area. If I feel unsafe in one area, I'll go to another. Because I'm very stealthy in my minivan. And a lot of people say, oh, well, they know you're in here. No, they don't. 
they don't know that. And um, just because my, my uh, at night everything's blocked off and they can't see in, they don't know if I'm in here or not. A lot of cars look just like this in Southern Arizona. So, well, I hope you enjoyed this. Is, uh, is van life over in America? Not by a long shot, but I do suspect it will be changing in the next couple years. And in five years, we might not even recognize it. If we're still here, we don't know. But I do think that big rigs are gonna go. They, they're gonna go. I think people are gonna do less traveling because of gas prices. I think that BLM land might be brought in. Like there's so much BLM, I think that the government might say, let's close off some of the BLM going on around here. The biggest BLM, well, the largest BLM is in Nevada. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, there's really only, um, like I read an article that said the governor of Nevada really only rules over like maybe 20% of the whole state because a lot of it's owned by military, a lot of it's owned by the government, the BLM, and there's only like people in Las Vegas and, uh, our Reno area. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, but in, in Arizona, there's a lot of BLM and in, in, um, Eastern California, along the East Coast of California, there's BLM and New Mexico and Utah, I think. <laughs> yeah, okay. But they could easily just kind of like keep bringing it in, diminishing, diminishing. Yeah. So, well, it'll be interesting to see, won't it? Okay. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I love you guys. Mwah. I love you guys so much. I didn't get to, um, but tomorrow I'll do a little bit more cooking for you. Okay. Promise. And I got other things going on too. I got so much going on, but pretty soon I'm going to head over to my daughter's. We're going to have a girl's, girl's evening outside. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm just having a really good, I really am having, uh, I'd like to report to everybody, I'm having a really good time in Tucson, I really am, I'm very happy. And you know, I've had some of my sad experiences. Um, and if you want to continue to send me um, nasty uh, comments um, about this and that and about um, what happened and why, why this and why that, and then putting me down, calling me names, you're out of here. I mean, I don't know why you would want to keep doing it. <laughs> they don't get through. YouTube is taking care of it and they're letting me know about it. So, and then this way, you're never going to be able to comment on anybody's channel because YouTube is, 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 is in control now. So if you want to do things like that, oh my gosh, just, yeah, I, you're better off not. Um, that way you can comment on other people's channels too. But finally, go finally Google, YouTube is taking a stand for us, YouTube creators. So, oopsie daisy, <laughs> oopsie daisy. You don't know what happened. You don't know the truth. You don't, you weren't there. You don't, <laughs> you're, you're assuming, um, you're unjustly assuming on, on both parts, both of them with him and I, you don't know. And I wouldn't presume to know what happened in your life or your relationship. You don't know, do you? But if you want to be nasty, oh well, you're out of you're out of YouTube. Okay. See you tomorrow, everybody. I love you guys mm, so much. I love you, and I hope you're having a good time too because this really is fun being back here and being with my family and my friends. I've been connecting with older friends and. We're, I'm having a ball. I'm just having a ball. So, mm, I love you. Bye.